my name is Leon. I'm from European Bioinformatics Institute. EBI is a international non-profit organization uh, based in UK, Cambridge. We provide uh, open data service uh, training programs and uh, a lot of things for researchers, scientists around the world to help them to do the biology, bioinformatics research. And you can see this photo, we are really big, it's a big uh, organization. In Cambridge, we have more than 500 people. And also we have many different websites and we love Drupal. We use Drupal to build our official website, 1000 Genomes, a famous uh, biology project in UK. And so Biomap Bridges, uh, this are just three examples. We have more websites based on Drupal. I'm a Drupal developer since I started since 2007. I like to give talks. I also contribute modules. You will see PDF, EPUB, Apache, Solar File, highlighting OG workflow, OG moderation, annotation, annotator. They are mainly focused on education, science field. And today I'm going to report two new modules, one called the ORCID, another is the EBI ontology lookup service. So, uh, anyone have worked uh, in science field or for library or for university? Have you? Have you worked uh, for university, university? Uh, or library or? Okay. Uh, you may know ISBN is a unique number for each book. ISBN. ISBN is a number for book. ISSN is a unique ID for journals. So, uh, ORCID is a open, no profit, community driven organization, just like Drupal. ORCID try to give a unique identity for scientific authors, scholars. So first, it provides accounts. Everyone can register account in ORCID.org. And after that, you will be assigned a unique ID. Uh, I use my profile as an example. Everyone in EBI have an ORCID ID now. We are the partner of ORCID.org. And uh, I can organize my works in ORCID.org. The aim is to let every scholar have an account and organize their own publications. It's to solve a problem. For example, we all know Stephen Hawking, but in the science field, if you check the publication, you will find there are many people have the same name. So with the unique ID, we can know who is the real author and all the works from one person. And second, ORCID provide APIs. All the information can be uh, can be retrieved from a RESTful API. And also, there is a OAuth API. It allowed the uh, other use, uh, other organizations like EBI or university or library to use the ORCID ID account to log in users in, to their websites. So it's can be a potential solution for single sign-on for organization like EBI. We are reviewing the possibility to use it, so that's why I started this project. Uh, 
the module is already on Drupal.org, it's for Drupal 8. It's very simple. If you have used uh, Facebook, Google, or Twitter login system, you will find a link under the login interface. If you click the link, it will bring you to the login interface from orchid.org. You input your ID or email and password. Then you can log in the Drupal website with the Orchid account. Very simple, right? It's supposed to be simple because uh, it's using OAuth, OAuth standard, which was designed to make developers like us make it simple. But that's the reality. Have you ever tried the other login system other than Facebook, Twitter, or Google? Yeah, I guess everybody just used the uh, OS from these big companies. So what they design, we sometimes we call the industry standard. It's uh, slightly more than the original OS standard. They provide their own way to do things. So for us, for developers, the real world is more complicated. Let's use PHP. That's only one language you will find to use all standard. You may need to use hybrid all. And also, there is another popular third part uh, third-party lab called uh, OPOS, and there are more other labs just to adopt OAuth in PHP. Let's talk about Drupal. If you try to search OAuth module on Drupal.org, this is for Drupal 7, you will find so many different modules. Like Twitter, this kind of module is just for one service provider, Twitter, and also Facebook, Google. And some model like OAuth client connector, they try to let users to connect all, all the OAuth providers. Let me tell you the truth. I tried them, and I found none of them is working with the Orchid ID. So why? It's a standard. It should be simple. Everybody just adopt the standard. Then it should be work, working. If you look at the modules on Drupal.org, you will find that they may mention that OAuth 2 is an authorization mechanism, not an authentication mechanism. What does it mean? That means in this standard, it's only tell you when and how to return a yes, this user logged in. But the login process, uh, procession is more complicated. Who is the user? We want to know. That's called a resource owner. So for big companies, they have their standard, industry standard. Normally, they use a resource owner ID. So most third-party lab just use that. But it is not really in the part of all standard. If you go deeper, in this case, you will find more problem. Like for the HP request, what's the header should be accept? This is also not the, uh, defined in the OAuth standard. If you go deeper, you'll find more problem. So the real life standard is more what you'd call guidelines. You can't really <laughs> think it defines everything, just makes this work. So now Drupal 8 have been, is released, so I want to try my luck on Drupal 8. Anyway, I need to write a new module. <laughs> Although there are many things I don't like about the Drupal 8, the Composer is definitely a great thing. I like it very much. It uh, gives us more options. We can use other popular PHP labs in Drupal now. Uh, in Previous sessions, you may already know that uh, in Drupal 8, HTTP, 
uh, Drupal HTTP requests have been replaced by a third party lab, Gazo, a popular HTTP request lab. So I follow the same path and I try to find a good OAuth to client lab. Then I found uh, the lab from the PHP legend, a PHP league. It has more than 1,000 stars on GitHub, so there must be a reason for the popularity. After I check it, I found that it designed really well. It can do everything in the OAuth 2 standard, and uh, it left uh, enough uh, flexibility for adopt with different uh, OAuth server providers. So based on it, I built a uh, Drupal Orchid module for Drupal 8. Now, this is my module. You can just let your user log in your, to your Drupal website with an uh, Orchid account. And I want to do more with this module. The important part is uh, all this works. If you run a website for university or library, you may want to import all this work to the Drupal website. Uh, you may know the Biblio module. That's a popular module among the education system to store you publications in Drupal. Uh, but it's only for Drupal 7. So probably in the future, we need to port Biblio module to Drupal 7 or backport the Orchid module to Drupal. Uh, put the Biblio module to Drupal 8 or backport Orchid module to Drupal 7. So any contribution will be welcome. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to talk the second module called the EBI Ontology Lookup Service. Uh, EBI Ontology Lookup Service is a new website for built by EBI. And uh, in this service, more than 100 ontologies was provided. They are dedicated uh, designed for biology information, content data, and have a really huge database of different terms. Uh, we use ontology to solve a big problem is uh, organize con uh, for organizing content in EBI. We have so many content and the different websites. Before I have, uh, we have many different custom categories. They can be different in different websites. Now we want to send that that side. So we pick up EDEM. It's a dedicated ontology just uh, designed for bioinformatics. From the, uh, it's not really clear. Hmm. Okay. okay, let me explain it. Uh, that's a hierarchy of all the terms. This one is a sequencing, a popular text for biology information, and uh, the designer have a really detailed information about each topic, the synonyms, the de uh, definitions, and all the terms have its uh, versions. And for the ontology, we have uh, people just keep maintain maintaining it, make it uh, uh, up to date. So talk about uh, organized content, tech content. We all know taxonomy. That's the first uh, reaction of all the Drupal developers. We did the same. We just import all the terms to Drupal as a taxonomy. It works works well for one Drupal website. But later we found it's hard to maintain if we have so many Drupal websites. Each term have a TID. The TID can be different in different Drupal website. And uh, when we need to exchange content between uh, 
to our website, it'd be more difficult. And we have a bigger problem after several months. The taxonomy, the ontology have been updated. There is a new version. How can we update it? Re-import all the terms. It will be more complicated. We may need to retag content. So I start thinking about a new module. It's e, uh, called EBI OLS. It's for Drupal 7, uh, mainly because we, most of our sites are still Drupal 7. I want to keep everything simple, so I just use text field and add a new field widget, OLS widget for the text field, and add a OLS formatter for the text field. So to use this module, just uh, create a text field and use the new widget and the display it use with a new formatter. Okay, I will demonstrate it. Uh, this, uh, can you see it? This is uh, just a Drupal node. And this field, item field, is a t uh, ontology field. It's a text field I want to use for tagging content. So I click at it in here. If I type, like, for example, D and I, it will, this module will go to the EBI OLS service and return all the terms in the EDEM, uh, in the EDEM ontology about the DNA. Then I can select the term I want, for example, DNA analyze. Then it, in the text field, it will store a unique, unique ID for the term. All this information are stored in the OLS, not, and if you already have a term, but the term was created before and uh, the ontology has been updated, there is a, maybe a mark. It, well, it will give you a warning. This term has been replaced is a obsolete term. After I save the node, you will see it display with the terms, but in the Drupal database, two unique term ID of the, from the ontology service will be stored. So the content can be moved around in different Drupal sites. And the site owner don't need to worry about the TID and the content import export issues. Okay, at the end, I'd like to reuse uh, all the metaphor we use many times, compare Drupal with uh, Jigsaw, or maybe also Lego. Each model is just like a piece of jigsaw. When we turn it, download it, install it, turn it on, it just works. It's not like the old standard. We need to worry about so many things. These modules make Drupal so popular in education field 
because not every scientist, not every researcher is a developer. But they can use the Drupal, use Drupal modules to adopt this kind of standards. Adopt these standards in the scientific education field. And this is from all the data from Acquia. That's how popular Drupal is in the education field. And I last said thanks to sponsors and all the module contributors. I'm a module contributor. I also benefit a lot from other people's work. So thanks, everybody. Questions? <laughs> Uh, everybody can register an account. But uh, other academic uh, uh, positions, and also just uh, what is it specifically for researchers? Uh, be designed for scholars. Everyone needs to write papers, publications. It's an authorization, not authentication. Yeah. You go there, log in, and return a yes. It doesn't specify permissions. It doesn't specify users to do more things than other users. No. But after you let user log in with your Drupal site, you can use the permission setting in Drupal. No, there is no roles in Arcade itself, but uh, I think the only difference you can have a organization account and an individual account. Also, you can, as a developer, you can apply to use their API to get the account with a key and the user. No other questions. Okay, that's the last uh, talk.